Windbound is a game that features a lot of different mechanics and areas to explore. On the 28th of August, players across PC, Xbox One, PS4, Switch and Stadia were offered this great title where they could craft a variety of weapons, equipment and foods in order to boost their survivability. But what if we ignored a lot of these recipes and put ourselves to the ultimate test? Today I'm going to show you guys that it is possible to beat Windbound without eating any meat, killing any creatures, crafting any weapons and only using the knife to gather resources as well as crafting any extra storage space. I am so happy to finally get this video out to you guys. I've been sleeping on this footage for too long and now it's time for me to share this. To achieve our goal, I'm going to be using strategies that would not normally be used in an exploration game. Due to the lack of food sources around, I'll be spending very little time at each island and reaching the Nautilus shells very quickly in order to make food less important during the run. I will also be avoiding aggressive creatures at all costs. Quick disclaimer, I know that there are blessings available at the end of each chapter to increase your storage space. However, in the spirit of this challenge, I decided not to use them. I also forgot to activate any of the blessings of the last chapter, but this video proves that that was not a problem. Okay, so with all that out of the way, let's begin our challenge. We start off as every player does by gathering grass and loose rocks on the ground. I then swam over to the neighbouring island to collect more resources as well as a small amount of food to see through the first chapter, and then it was on to collecting the ancestral ore. To cross the seas in the first chapter, a simple grass canoe and perhaps an anchor is absolutely all you will need. There are mostly simple islands to pull up to and there are not many threats out to sea. I should definitely mention that killing creatures gets you a lot of essential tools for your survival. So in this challenge, we have no access to the axe or the hammer. Technically the bone shovel is available because you can find loose bones in the savannah, but I'm not going to count on this. Another thing that is worth noting in this challenge is the beds of coral just under the ocean surface. These are often inhabited by crobsters, or well, crabs, that can latch onto your bow and damage it until it breaks. They can be stopped with a simple hit of the knife, but that will kill them, which we're not allowed to do. To get around this, the easiest way is just to avoid the coral, but at any point, if this does happen, which it does, you can quickly park the boat and dismantle it to get as many resources back as possible. If you can, craft a grass mass nice and early, as this will allow you to spend less time at sea and more time gathering food and resources at the islands. I got pretty lucky with the spawn locations of the Nautilus shells in chapter 1. The chapter is definitely easier if the towers spawn closer together, but with the few threats at sea in chapter 1, it is not a problem if they are spread out, as this gives you plenty of opportunities to fill Kara's limited inventory space with whatever you will need. Which, in this challenge, is probably just going to be grass, bamboo, and of course, mushrooms. With no meat on the table, we can only eat vegetables. With all three Nautilus shells collected, it's time to move on to the first crossing. Your grass canoe will easily survive this, as the highways will allow you to avoid most of the rocks and pick up plenty of speed to get through the only three segments that the first crossing has. I then asked my friend's opinion on the first blessing I should take, which my dumbass self never ended up activating because my speedrun mindset completely forgot to do it, and with that, I moved on to the new world. My luck continues in chapter 2 and 3 with the Nautilus shells spawning very close together and were easily accessible. In chapter 2 and onward it is much more likely that islands spawn surrounded by rocks and in chapter 3 onwards positive swamps have a chance of spawning as well. In case you're wondering, I chose adventurer difficulty for this run. While the combat difficulty doesn't matter since I'm not fighting anything, I wasn't willing to run the risk of dying and having to start all over again for the sake of the video. The achievements in Windbound are obtainable across both difficulties so feel free to use survivalist difficulty in your run if you choose to do so. My main goal for chapter 2 was to upgrade to a bamboo canoe and a grass mast. Thankfully, all the sail types perform at near enough the same level on a single canoe and is not crucial to upgrade, so being only able to use grass and bamboo for the sails is perfectly okay. A good way to avoid damaging your boat is to assemble your sail when out at sea and use it to pick up loads of speed and slowing down and disassembling it when closing in on islands. It is far easier to control in confined spaces when only using the oar. We want to save as many resources as possible, so reducing how often we need to repair the boat is a very good way to do so. When exploring the islands, pay close attention to the change in music. It indicates how much danger you're in. It will be calm when you are fine and get quieter with guitar cards when an enemy is aware of you. It will then change to a boss battle theme when an enemy wants to attack you. Also, do your best to be aware of your surroundings. Oh Jesus! The crossings become a little more difficult as the chapters progress, as there are more segments and more obstacles. I mostly used a single canoe for the crossing as I wanted full, easy control for the tight spaces. 
A sturdy boat with a deck and multiple floats is of course advised for the crossing, but in this challenge you can't spare the resources for this, so it is more efficient just to reinforce the boat you have, as sailing on a damaged deck is dangerous, especially in the crossing. After the crossings, I of course forgot to activate any of the blessings, and with that, it's on to the next chapter. My luck starts to fade at the beginning of chapter 4, since I can't see any of the towers at first glance. I decided the best thing to do here was to restock at the first island so I could spend as little time as possible at the more dangerous islands in this chapter. Bigger swamps and desert spawn and there is no way I am wasting my time with the dangerous creatures in the desert. I ended up running into a few crossers at this point. I think the game just decided I was getting too lucky and thought it would be funny just to give me the hardest time possible since I got into a serious shamble at this point. I lost my boat to the first crossster so I quickly whipped up another only to have that destroyed as well. Honestly guys, just avoid the coral, even if it means going around the other side of the island, since this was a big resource drainer. Good thing I stocked up before all of this happened. It's a good idea to find any food you possibly can at this point. If you get enough and you get lucky with the spawns of chapter 5, you can ignore almost everything and go straight for the shells, unless you get attacked by crossers for whatever reason. The crossing also gets a lot more difficult for the remainder of the chapters, so gather as much bamboo, grass, sticks and palm fronds as you can carry, as a bamboo boat with bamboo spikes is the best boat in terms of strength to cost ratio you can create with the limited resources you have in this challenge. After clearing the crossing in chapter 4, I finally realised I forgot to activate any blessings. I went with a reduction in stamina drain when sprinting since there was no way I'd be able to increase my maximum hunger at this point. Leaving out red and yellow gems in this challenge was completely unintentional, but it worked out in a way that I could prove not only beating the game without them was possible, but beating the challenge without them was possible as well. Now chapter 5 is the ultimate test. With the islands being a lot bigger, there is more ground to cover and a higher risk of running into dangerous creatures. We want to avoid running near spider eggs hanging from the trees as silk moths are very fast so ideally you would kill them, but we can't do that here. And we can't collect silk thread, so a glider is a no-go as well. We can only run in, collect the shell, and run out. So long as you scout out the islands in Chapter 5, you should not have an issue collecting the remaining shells for your journey. Once you've collected them all, it's time for you to begin the endgame. The final crossing is a lot longer than the others, as it is a test to see how well you've created your boat. There are more obstacles with the addition of sharks and jellyfish, as well as the Nautilus creating massive waves that are dangerous if you're not careful, but they are amazing if you use them to your advantage. Of course, you do need to be careful with your controlling if you decide to use a sail. I decided against the sail for this as I wanted control over speed since the boat is not as sturdy as it could be. All is well through most of the crossing, and when the Nautilus smashes our boat, we know we've achieved our goal of clearing Windbound without crafting weapons or bags, eating meat, or killing any creatures at all. This challenge was extremely fun to do, and most definitely a twist on playing your typical exploration games. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content, and comment down below any tips you would add to this challenge, or any other challenges you want me to cover. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!